So we learned about the transit gateway. Now we get to find out how it all works. It's the hands-on part of AWS networking and Build Day TV. Jeffrey Powers here with Alistair Cook. How's it going, Alistair? It's good today. Awesome. So we learned about transit gateway. And I do have to admit, I glossed over a little bit <laughs> as you were talking about it. So I'm really hoping that the hands-on is going to be uh, giving me the the idea that uh, that you want to convey on there. Well, you know, the great thing about publishing these this content on YouTube is that if you decide you did gloss over, you can always go back and watch it again. Absolutely. Yeah, I know, Jeffrey, you're, you're, uh, you're going to do that when you have a requirement to build a transit gateway and not before. Oh, no, I have to do this when I'm editing the video, so I'm going to be watching it again. Oh, yes, you get to watch it again whether you want to or not. Yeah. <laughs> So let's get into building uh, the Transit Gateway and, uh, and, and see how it works. Okay, so what we're going to build is very similar to what I showed in, in the, uh, the demo, is that we've got two VPCs. So I'm gonna, I've already built out both a pasta and a pizza VPC. Mm -hmm. I'm going to deploy a Transit Gateway and attach pasta and pizza to the Transit Gateway. Okay. And then I'm also going to set up a VPN connection that will point back to my on-premises network here and in, in my shed quarters. Got it. So the only thing I'm not going to do is, is reconfigure my network on-premises here to connect. I will I'll just show you the uh, AWS side. I've already shown in, a, in another video how that VPN connectivity works, uh, but I will show the transit gateway connectivity between those two VPCs. So here we go. What are we starting with? We have AWS console here. And we have my VPCs. Now I'm working in the Sydney region because I'm here in New Zealand. That's my nearest region. And I have three VPCs. I have the default VPC that every account gets in every region. And I have my Sydney pizza VPC on this 10.64 range. And I have my uh, pasta VPC on that 12 range. Okay. Currently, both of these have their own internet gateways and their route tables for the uh, public and private. And so we can see that there is a uh, public subnet with routes out through the internet gateway. But there's no VPC peering in here or any of that. It's, it's all been torn down and rebuilt since we did that. Yeah. So we can come down and create ourselves a transit gateway. So down in here, the bottom of the VPC section, I can create a transit gateway and give it a name uh, let's go food as the name of our transit gateway do we have dns support yeah let's let's just go with create transit gateway as usual we get our transit gateway id but we also have our nice friendly name for it state will sit it pending for a little while as it deploys out as aws deploys out the resources in the background so we'll just pop on the refresh button a few times and uh, wait for it to come up. That only took a couple of minutes. Thanks, Jeffrey, for the time travel in the video. And now we can see our transit gateway is available. Okay. Next thing we need to do is attach it to some VPCs. So we pop down here in the list and we can see that there are transit gateway attachments. So we then decide we want to create a transit gateway attachment. So our transit gateway is going to be the food transit gateway. We're going to attach to a VPC. And then we're going to name this attachment. So this is going to be food. Uh, let's connect pizza first. Right, enable DNS and choose which VPC we'd like to connect to. So I'm going to choose the pizza VPC. It says, which subnets inside the pizza VPC would you like to connect to? And it's automatically chosen private subnets. A private subnet in one of my VPCs it's actually chosen a public subnet in the other. I want these both to connect to the private, uh, the, v, the subnet that doesn't have direct connection to the, to the internet. Okay, so I've chosen a uh, subnet in each of the availability zones where I have subnets. You can see that I don't have a subnet in the third availability zone in Sydney because I simply don't need it for scale. If you did have a subnet there, you'd need to connect to it. Okay. We create the attachment. The request succeeded. And again, we see a pending state of that connection. While we're waiting for that to complete, Let's create another transit gateway uh, connection. 
So again, from our food, but this is going to be from food to pasta. Choose the pasta. I only have one subnet in each of uh, one subnet in each of the availability zones for pasta, so I'm going to accept the defaults to use both of those public subnets and create the attachment here. So now I have two attachments pending in my environment. Uh, these attachments are then going to turn up in my transit gateway, and I'm going to be able to create entries in my transit gateway route table. You can see a route table here is already associated with my trap with my transit gateway and it doesn't have any static routes in it but we are going to work with the associations which are now turning up uh, and we're going to get our routes from those so if we pop into the route tables for our vpcs we can start making some changes in these so we have the pasta route table and we can add a route in here to say that it can reach all of our internal network via the transit gateway attachment. So transit gateway, oh, hasn't got our transit gateway attachment yet on pasta. Okay, it must be the pizza one that's, that's already created. So let's go here with the public subnet on pizza edit route table, add a route to 10, and we'll just choose from the list the slash eight. And then we come into the transit gateway and we should see our transit gateway food is now connected. We can also add an additional route in here to that 192.168 slash 16 network. And that's what my on-premises uh, network here lives inside. Again, say go to the transit gateway. So we can see the route table down the bottom here, which is exactly what I've showed as an example route table might look like inside a, uh, in the previous video. Mm -hmm. It's got the two routes to my on-premises network. It's got a, a route that is the default local route for the entire VPC. And it's got a last resort route that goes via the internet gateway. Okay. Now, unfortunately, I do have to make the same change to every route table in that VPC. But I only have to do this once for the entire, um, the entire set of internal networks. I don't need to change this again each time I add an additional VPC to my transit gateway. Uh, and that's what's different compared to using VPC pairing, where we'd need to change the route tables every time an additional VPC was added. So although I've had to update the route tables on three different subnets here in Sydney, I will never have to update these route tables as uh, more networks get deployed out through my transit gateway. And of course, this can all be scripted and automated because, you know, it's, it's AWS. So that's do, do you pizza. have scripts? Do you have those scripts, or I don't actually have those those scripts explicitly myself. I haven't written those that automation, um, but I have have the deployment scripts for this that uh, I haven't yet made available. I must remember to make those available and uh, let you know through the um, let you know through the buildaylive.com website where you can find my example scripts. Okay, perfect. So let's see if the pasta transit gateway connection has completed now. Yes, we can see the food transit gateway is now available to the pasta VPC as well. And I can set those same routes. You know, I've seen some suggestions of using Lambda functions to set these, these route tables up and to periodically look at every VPC that is in your AWS account and check that the association and the route table are set up. So there's some interesting use of automation to do this. Okay. So now both of my VPCs, my VPC should be able to see one another. So let's take a look at the EC2 instances that are inside my VPCs and see if they can. So I'm running some EC2 instances. I've got my usual pizza web servers. I've got my um, original, my long running jump host that lives in my default VPC. 
but I have a jump host in each of the pizza and pasta VPC. So what I'm going to do is use the connection information in here to connect first to my pizza jump host. So I'll grab that, pop into my terminal window, and I will paste in that command. Just like we did last time. Just like we've done every time we're connected to a uh, Linux box that is a jump host that's in a public subnet that's, that's accessible to us. Uh, and from there, I should be able to, well, let's find the private IP address of the pastor jump host and see if we can talk to it. So we're not going to talk to the public IP address that would go out through the internet gateway. We're going to talk to the private IP address that would only work if we're going across the transit gateway successfully. Uh, but of course, uh, we're not allowing pings, we're allowing SSH. Uh, so I should be uh, SSHing uh, as, well, let's not even put a user ID there. This should pop the security warning for the thumbprint of the other jump host. Okay. But it should then, once I accept the security warning, it should fail because I'm not using the pre-shared key. But it pops the security warning because I can actually reach from the pizza jump host to the pasta jump host. So I have successfully connected from one VPC to another. Then it says permission is denied because you don't have the right credentials you don't have the right pre-shared key you remember that back in my local session I, I had to use this minus i with the aws demo pm that's using a pre-shared key for authentication i haven't got that file sitting on the, the jump post okay but at this point what we have done is we've connected from the pasta vpc to the uh, well actually from the pizza vpc to the pasta vpc through the transit gateway cool all right the final thing we wanted to do was to connect our transit gateway to my on-premises network. So again, we would do a transit gateway attachment. We create our attachment. We'd say it's on our food transit gateway, but instead of being a VPC that we're connecting to, it's going to be a VPN. Uh, do I have a customer gateway still? No, I don't currently have a customer gateway, so I'd have to specify a new gateway. Put the IP address of my on-premises and check back in the, the uh, VPN uh, configuration component where I, I looked at, at uh, setting up VPNs. This is where we would, um, you'd, you'd set, set up the same things in there. But we could, for instance, set up static routing and define our routes through. But normally we use BGP, we learn the routes from the other side. We can then create the attachment with the VPN. And so the attachment request succeeded. And if I refresh my list, uh, I should actually have named this one. So food to on-prem. Right, this is using a VPN connection. And if we look at our VPN, site-to-site -site VPN connections, we actually have a new VPN connection that was created by the transit gateway to our customer gateway. And it will have all of the same tunnel details and the ability to download the configuration for your router that we had with the VPN that we had between one VPC and our on-premises environment. So the transit gateway provides that same capability for the, the VPN. And it's, it's in here where we could modify, it's currently pending, so I can't modify it. We could modify it in here in order to allow greater throughput than the two connections that we get by default. So it was pretty quick to stand up, pretty easy to do. If I needed to add another VPC, then I just need to attach the VPC and change the route table inside the newly attached VPC. So long as it fits within my 10 uh, 000 192.168.00 uh, range that is already in my route tables, I don't need to change the other VPCs at all for a new VPC attached to the transit gateway. This is why we like the transit gateway. It vastly simplifies configuring connectivity between groups of VPCs and on-premises environments. Cool. Did it seem simpler, Jeff? Uh, yeah, uh, it, it, it's pretty straightforward. I'd probably have to do it a couple times so I could get the hang of it. So, but uh, yeah, yeah. It shouldn't and, be any know, problem. It, 
for anyone. With, with just three things connected together, transit gateway is probably not that much simpler than doing it with, with VPCs. And the big difference here is that I've only had to configure one VPN. If I was attaching two VPCs to one premises without transit gateway, I'd have two VPNs to configure. Okay. But you can see that if this was 20 VPCs that I needed to integrate, that's where things get so much simpler. A little hair. Yeah. Don't oh, simpler. It doesn't get hairier? Buttons. It gets simpler. Simpler compared to using um, VPC peering and, and VPN. So Transit Gateway simplifies the connectivity between them. Okay. Well, that was what I wanted to show. That's hands-on building a Transit Gateway and connecting multiple VPCs together and connecting back onto on-premises. So uh, do we have anything for next week as of yet? I'm working on getting us a direct connect. So being able to show that dedicated high bandwidth private network connection without using your internet to connect between your transit gateway or your VPCs in your on-premises environment. So hopefully we'll be able to show you that. And then I'm also going to talk about some of the costs involved in what we've been doing and talk about how maybe best practices might not be to do all of the things we've been doing here because some of these things can end up being quite expensive. Okay. So we'll do a cost and design episode as well. Oh, sweet, sweet. Always need to find out how much it's gonna cost. Well, yeah, particularly if you're paying the bill. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, so if, if I'm not paying the bill, then I don't need to know how much it costs. I just need to know it works. So. All right, well, that is it for this episode, episode 7B. Thank you guys very much for, uh, for sticking with us. Thank you very much, Alistair, for, uh, for explaining all of this. Always a pleasure to be here with you, Jeffrey. All right. And, of course, if you want to uh, go ahead, like, subscribe, comment, as you could always do that bell notification. We'll let you know when the next video is. And we will be back. We do this every Sunday at around 5 p.m. Eastern. We release these videos. So uh, come back next week and check out some more. So thanks a lot, Alistair, and we'll see you next time. Take care.